Hey there, my beautiful overachieving business mamas. Welcome to the Moxie Movement, where we're tearing down myths and propelling women like you to success, both in business and at home. I'm Sarah Greener, your guide on this journey, because I've walked this tightrope too. And together, we're here to help redefine what success looks like. Dive in for real talk, actionable steps, and a community that gets the hustle of juggling motherhood, wife life, and that entrepreneurial drive. It's time for a little Moxie. Welcome back to the Moxie Movement podcast. If you are a regular watcher, you might notice in the background that things are looking a little different. It's been exciting around here in the last couple of weeks as we've made some big shifts, some moves in our life as we realign to what does the next level look like for us. Excited to have you here. Want to talk all about what's been going on in our world and we're going to dive into something I'm seeing pop up all the time. It's a pretty regular occurrence and I think something about the back end of the year means it shows up more often than not. We're talking overwhelm later on in the podcast. If this is something that you struggle with on a regular basis and hi, I'm Sarah. I'm definitely someone that was always struggling from overwhelm in my life and business. I want to give you some of my top tips that I use, not just for myself, but also for my clients. First, I want to update you on what's been going on around here. For the sharp eyes among you, you will notice that the room I'm in, the background that I've got behind me is a little different than what you've been seeing from me over the last few podcasts. That's because we've moved locations. When we came here to Thailand, it was with the intention of being here for a short time, doing a bit of traveling, catching up with old friends, just reconnecting with a place that was really dear to mine and Johnny's hearts to get the traveling piece working for us to get us moving because it felt like a really big leap to get on the plane and go to South America, new place, certainly didn't know the language. It just felt like a really big step after being in New Zealand pretty solidly for the last few years. Yep, we've done some traveling around a month here, a month there, but that's quite different from selling all your belongings, Airbnb, your house out and hopping on a plane with everything you own in a suitcase. The way that we wanted to do that was a staged approach. We thought, well, let's go to Thailand. It's adventurous enough. Scarlett's going to learn new language, going to have new experiences, meet new people, learn, taste some new foods. Bonus, the ocean is warm. We get to hang out and do some things that we love. That's a good first step so that we can get on a plane and get moving. While we've been here, I certainly have come to the realisation that I'm really good at setting a goal getting after it, getting it done, and then immediately setting the next goal and getting to work on it. I very rarely stop and enjoy and experience that the, the moment after the goal has been done, the maintenance period, they're just leaning in and going, wow, look where we are, and can we just be in the moment and experience it? Very good at moving quickly on to the next project. One of my realizations this year has been that I have been doing that for a long time. Most of my business career, I have just gone from one thing to the next to the next. And that's really interesting. There's a huge amount of growth in it. I got to an age and stage in my life where I was like, I want things to go a little slower. I want to have more time to enjoy the goals that we laid out for ourselves. One of the decisions that we made was that we weren't going to jump around quite so quickly over the next 12 months. What we've done is we've moved into a place uh, on a long-term basis. We're going to sort out some visas and we're going to be here for the next 12 months. This is the new Moxie HQ. I'm very excited about it. I have this beautiful space. It's away from the touristy beaches. It's lovely and quiet, a great place to create and make space in our lives for a little bit. That's the first big change that's happened. While I really advocate building something that's sustainable, my business is certainly sustainable. My life is definitely sustainable. I don't often pause and just be in the moment. Between the three of us, led by me having this realization, the three of us have decided this is where we're going to be for a little bit. It's pretty exciting. We moved in last week. It's a beautiful spot. We've had a little explore around the nearby area. We've got some great new food spots. We can still get to our gym that we've been using. And uh, Scarlett and I are going to find a place for us to do yoga and ice baths over the next couple of weeks. We're super excited about it. The second thing is that as we're making this decision, I was setting up my workshop uh, that I'm doing later on this week with clients around decision making. And one of the things that it really highlighted for me as I was doing the work in the workshop was where our highest life priorities and our values have really clashed. I talked about that a little bit on last week's podcast 
if you haven't listened to it, go back and have a listen. It's a great one talking about decisions and what shows up and causes us to make decisions that don't stick or don't work for us long term. And that realization has been really useful for us here. We've lent into how do we make sure that we're making our highest life priorities our priority when we're making big life decisions. That was one of the things that shone a light on this constant moving around was, okay, we're always looking for the next big challenge, but what if the next big challenge was being in one place and really exploring it and being really present with the journey? That's what that came out of. The next thing that's been huge for me is that while we design our lives for ourselves, I, I'm going to advocate always that as a woman in business, you need to put yourself first because otherwise you can't be who you need to be for anyone else. And while we do that, there's some magical pieces that come out of that. For me, it's recognising that I designed this life, yes, for me and for Johnny and for Scarlett, but primarily it's my life that I designed and Johnny primarily designs his life. And while our children are young enough and they are reliant on us for home and food and those sorts of things, that the life you design for you, they also get to live. That was a pretty magical realisation that this kid that we have, she's walking on a beach in Thailand every week. She is learning Thai. She is this morning going to the markets, going to her favourite stalls and ordering what she needs to make pak bung fai dang and the Thai green curry and a Thai omelette for us for dinner tonight. They know her <laughs> at the stalls. They ask where her dad is. It's a pretty magical life. She's now downstairs while I'm recording this, doing her science, lying on a yoga mat, somewhere she's comfortable, doing work the way she wants to do it. She's already done her maths this morning, and I suspect after that she'll do a vocal practice for her music. The life that we design for ourselves is also the life that they get to live while they are your dependents. And if that doesn't make designing a life worth living and designing a business that supports that worth doing, I don't know what does. And I think sometimes I have these realizations, I don't talk about this enough because Scarlett lived the pain of me not being deliberate about it. She lived the pain of having a mother who worked 60, 100 hours a week, who was at home to put her to bed, who wasn't home to do baths, who certainly didn't cook dinner, missed stuff at school. She lived that. And I don't want any child to have to live that. If you're in business, you're the boss. You should get to do what matters most to you. That was the whole point of not having a nine to five. If all you've done is build yourself enough nine to five, then what was the point? Because the life you and I design, the business that we then build to serve that life, serves them too. They get to live the life you design. And if you're struggling to shift in something in your business, have a look at the life that your children are living and go, is this what I want for them? Is this enough? Or do I want more? And it's totally cool if it's enough. If the life that you're living is exactly where you want to be and exactly where your children want to be, I love that for you. And if you look at them and you think you want more, then more is totally possible. I'm not going to wave a magic wand over you and change it. You are. You're going to decide that you want more, that you want to design a bigger, more spacious, more interesting, more comfortable, more abundant life for them, you're going to decide that and then you're going to take the actions to do it. If you are like putting off in any way, shape or form designing your life because of your children, I'm going to let you know that they benefit in so many ways from you being deliberate about it. Hurry up and do it. Because I was lucky enough to get a wake-up call when she was five we're now, she's 12, going into those teenage years. I am so grateful that we did it when we did. Because if we'd left it much longer, we wouldn't be here now. I'm so excited about the next few years and what they're going to bring for us because we deliberately decided what we want. I'm not saying you have to go and live overseas, play any stretch of the imagination. That's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I picked my husband up off a beach in Thailand. There's a pretty good chance that I was going to end up back traveling the world because I love it. The question is, what does great look like for you? Not somebody else's version of it, not my version of it, but your version of it. Because if you create your version of success that serves you and the people that matter most, because I'm letting you know right now, they're probably your highest priorities for this chapter, then they're going to get to live that life too. And there is nothing like it.
shit days. There will still be shit days. <laughs> There's still going to be days where this isn't going to go. And I'm going to be grateful on those days when things are a little bit challenging of what we've built because it just, it just felt like a distant dream to me not that long ago. The last thing I've noticed is that planning has gone to every part of our lives. So Johnny has gone back to New Zealand for the next three and a half weeks to do the maintenance on the boat, got to lift her out of the water, clean up her bum, paint her, make sure she's all good for the next season. Scarlett and I are on our own. Before Johnny left, he sat down and he planned out the next three and a half weeks of homeschooling for Scarlett. Her entire calendar is scheduled in and she's following it. She's downstairs right now doing a focus. She's what do you need, mum? I'm in a focus work time. She, this is my 12 year old girl with ADHD. I'm in a focus work time right now, mum. What do you need? I don't need anything. It's all good. Just coming down to the bathroom. She is working her way through her pre planned week. It is the boss. She's just going to do what it says. When Johnny gets to the slipway, he's going to do exactly the same thing. He's going to work through the planned, the pre planned maintenance schedule that him and Aaron have put together over the year of what needs to be done when the boat comes down on the heart. And why does that matter? Because it takes off so much pressure. It reduces so many of the decisions that we have to make. If I had got up this morning and I had to figure out what she needed to do for school and when, what time we were going to have lunch and what we were going to eat today and what I was going to talk to you about as well as I coached clients this morning, what was I going to say to them? All of that thought process would have reduced my ability to be creative and to be able to see the simplest way through for my clients. All of that would impact Johnny's ability to do his job. All of that would impact Scarlett's ability to be curious and learn because that's her job right now. So planning has weaseled its way into every part of our lives and every part of our lives that it makes its way into, it has made it better. The caveat on this is it's not just enough to plan. You have to execute on it. You have to take action. Check in with me next week. <laughs> so, so far we're executing super well. Let's see how that goes further. Now, we don't expect perfection around here. We're looking for about 80% is where it's at. But check in with us next week to see how that's going. It's been a big, exciting week. We said quite Johnny for a little bit. But not really, because it's the age of the engineer. So I could talk to him every day, which is awesome. But he's not here physically with us. And... I want to talk about something that in the past would have probably crippled me with Johnny leaving. It used to be something that I used all the time. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm drowning. I don't know what to think. I don't know where to go. I don't... And when you're overwhelmed, you just end up stuck. It's just, you've got so many options, so many choices. You don't know where to go or what to do. And in order to weed through all those choices, you've got to make decisions. And you only get so many decision-making points on a daily basis. And because we have so many options now, we just don't use them for the right things. We use our decision-making powers for the wrong things instead of the big things that move the needles in our lives. And I want to talk about overwhelm because I see a lot of it. I think I also see a lot of it this time of the year. I think we're coming to the back end of the year. People are feeling pressure to get set up for Christmas, for the summer holidays, for the last term of school. Especially when you're a mum in business, you there is a, a lot that goes on in the next three months that is an expectation on you. Mum can get pretty quick, pretty fast. We're then going to add into that the environment. And a lot of this stuff is stuff that's outside of your control. The environment that's going on in terms of what's happening in the economy, something that's happening inside your industry. There are a whole lot of things that are outside your control that if you spend a lot of time, effort and energy on, they're going to add to your overwhelm. Here's where I want to go today. I want to talk to you about what overwhelm is and where it comes from. And then I want to give you some quick hacks that we use all the time to reduce it. Overwhelm is the pain that comes with having too much. And we say around here it comes from having too much choice, so too many options, too many choices, and too many decisions to make to sift through it. Overwhelm is actually one of these things that comes out of success. If you didn't have choices, you wouldn't have overwhelm. Overwhelm comes from having too much, not too little. And many of us end up using it as an excuse not to move forward. It certainly was for me. Overwhelm was the state that I lived in 
and it's what I let keep me stuck. I let it keep me stuck because it was almost easier to stay where I was than to just take one step out of it because I was so busy trying to get through the day-to-day to-do lists, all the things I had to choose to do every day, that I didn't have the chance to look, look up and see what was possible and see what actually mattered, what levers I actually needed to pull to get myself out of it. When you're in that state, the very first thing I want you to do is something that's so simple. It's so simple, easy. People are always like, oh, that can't fix it. And the truth is, it does. It's ridiculously simple and easy. And you, my beautiful overachiever, can do it in an instant. All you need is a pen and a piece of paper. Overwhelm is worst when we're doing it in our head. When you're overthinking with the overwhelm, it is impossible to get out of because the moment you close your eyes, the moment you try to rest, the moment you do anything else, it's still happening up here because you're carrying it around inside your head. The first thing I get anyone to do when they're feeling overwhelmed is to get a pen and paper and just write everything down. It does one of two things. As a general rule, it feels like more when it's up here. It's much heavier when it's in your head and it feels like there's so much more to do. So many more options, so many more things that have to be done right now. So the very first thing I'm going to get you to do always is write it down. It's also noisy up there. 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. We're not consciously aware of all of them, but that's what's going on up there. If you try to sort through all of this inside your head, no wonder you're stressed. Stop doing that. Get a pen and paper. I don't even mind if you have horrible handwriting like me. I have the handwriting that could have been a doctor's. Much to my mother's disgust. She's like, you had beautiful handwriting when you were small. Now I don't. I just go very fast. I just want you to get a pen and paper and write it all down. Everything that you are thinking about that potentially is something you need to do or a decision you need to make or someone who needs something from you or an opportunity that you think you need to take, like anything and everything. Remembering that overwhelm is something that comes out of abundance, an abundance of choices, an abundance of options. We want you to write everything down. When you've written everything down, then I want you to take a highlighter. Now, this bit is really difficult because you think everything on that list is important. Here's my first rule. One, you can only highlight things on here in this first stage where if you don't do it, someone's going to die, literally die. Not they'll be upset, not they'll be a bit annoyed at you, not we might miss out on a sale. Someone is literally going to die. I want you to look at everything you wrote down and I want you to take your highlighter and I want you to highlight where if you don't do something, someone will die. Now, you should probably feed your children and you should probably put a roof over their heads. But I'll be honest, even if you forget, unless your children are really small, most of your kids will find something to eat, even if you don't do that. We build things up to be so much bigger than they are inside our heads. When you write them down, often there's less of them than you think because our beautiful brains put things on repeat. It feels like more than there actually is. And they make them bigger than they are if you're just holding them in your head. So make them heavier, more dressed if you don't get them done. Whereas when you write them down on a piece of paper and I ask you to highlight just the things that someone will die if you don't do them, there's not going to be very many. There'll be a few exceptions to this rule, but not many. You probably, in most cases, haven't highlighted anything. So, awesome. The next thing is, what's on the list that if it doesn't get done, you are going to significantly impact your business in the next 6 to 12 months if you don't get it done this week? Highlight those things. I also want you to highlight the things that if you don't get them done this week, they will significantly negatively impact your relationships with the people that matter. That's probably your kids, your significant other, maybe some close friends and family. That's it. No further than that. And when you do that, you're going to see that there actually is a lot less that must get done because it is urgent and important to you, the driver of your life, than anything else, the driver of your business, the leader of your business. 
I'm not going to suggest that you now use this list as a to-do list. I am a massive fan of kicking to-do lists to the curb. They don't help, they make things worse. What I was trying to do here was just get things out of your head and down on paper because you will feel better just unloading it out of your mind and onto a piece of paper. We will also have the benefit of looking at it and going, cool, there's not much on here that is life or death right now. And there's not even much on there that's going to negatively impact the things that matter most to me, being those people I love and the business that pays for all of it. In that moment, now you can just take a little breath and you're okay. And even if you didn't do all of those things, guess what? It's okay because next week they'll still be here. One of the things I had to learn, and I probably didn't learn it early on <laughs> in my business career, was that if you don't do the work, it's okay. No one steals it. No fairy comes in and does it overnight when you're not watching. Your work is still there tomorrow, the next day, and the day after. No one ever takes it away from you. The opportunity is always there to do it if you want to. And when you take that pressure off and you recognize that everything's going to be okay, now we can make better decisions. Why do I want to do that? Because if you're operating from stress and overwhelm, you are down to 50% of your brain's capacity, there or thereabouts. And not much. And you're going to work on half your brain? You're a smart, intelligent woman. We don't want to use all of our brains to get through this, to get through where we are this season, this chapter in our lives. Not half of it. We don't want to half-ass it. We certainly don't want a half-brain either. It's going to make your life harder. Very quickly, download it all and get it done. If you want a longer-term solution for overwhelm, then you need to stop increasing your choices and increasing your decisions. We need to reduce your options, reduce your choices that you need to make on a daily basis, and therefore reduce the decisions that you're going to need to make. How do we do that? The simplest way, come join us inside the Power Hour and we'll show you exactly how. Short of that, we're going to do it here now. How do we reduce choices? We just reduce them. We decide what are going to be our filters that reduce our choices. Let me give you some examples. If you decide that you're not going to eat sugar anymore, it reduces your options significantly. So if you look at the back of every pack, it's got some form of sugar on it. You're going to reduce your choices and your options. You're going to reduce overwhelm. It's the same thing that happens when people go on these restrictive diets and they're like, I'm not going to eat any carbs. For a while, it takes the mental load off because it reduces the choices. It has other implications, and I'm no nutritionist, so I'm not going to get into that. And I know why it works is because you, don't, you have to make less decisions. It's like fasting's really appealing. I don't have to think about what to have for breakfast. I don't need to eat any food until lunchtime. Sweet. That's a whole lot of options that I don't have to decide anymore. You also want to do things like set rituals and rules in your life where you don't make decisions. Get this. If you have the option to get up any time in the day, and you do because you're the boss, that's a choice that you're making every day if you don't set a rule around it and reduce that option. Set a I get up at this time rule and then stick to it. Because that way you never have to figure through all the options for waking up. Same for going to bed. Pick one. And again, you are potentially rolling your eyes as you listen to this going, oh my God, Sarah, this is so basic. It is basic. And yet most of us don't. Most of us are like, I'll just work until I get everything done. And then I'll feed the family. And the family goes to bed. I'm going to go and do the washing. I'll do the dishes. When the dishwasher's finished and the washing machine's finished, I'll unload that and I'll hang the washing out. Oh, and then when everything's done, I'm going to sit down, have some time to myself. So I'm going to scroll or I'm going to get on Netflix, Neon, Disney, whatever it is you're watching at the moment, and then be completely overwhelmed by the millions of choices on there about what you're going to watch and make more decisions. Instead, reduce the options that you have. Reduce your clothes options. Go, this is my uniform for work. This is my uniform for working out. This is my uniform for the weekends when I hang out with the kids. Again, it might sound boring, but if you're constantly getting overwhelmed, if we can fix that, then we can slowly introduce stuff back in later on, but we need to reduce the choices. The second step is 
to reduce decisions. Get out of your head, reduce your options, reduce your choices, and then reduce your decisions. We do that inside the Power Hour by doing the Power Hour. And what does that mean? It means we do the planning in advance. Remember at the start, I talked about how planning has gotten to every part of our lives. That's because it makes life easier. That's because it lets us have brain space for other things. And again, if you've been following along with my journey, I'm in my mid-40s, I'm going through perimenopause, and I've really struggled with the brain fog and forgetting things and forgetting words and lots of things that, as someone who's pretty high-functioning and high-performing, I've not struggled with before. And I needed to reduce those decisions even more to make this work. These tools have saved our lives, it feels, in the last 18 months. Because we've actually still been able to function, our businesses have still functioned. I don't feel like I've been performing at the top of my game and things have still worked because we do the power hour, before we, because we plan things in advance. What does that mean? It means one hour of every week is dedicated to making all the decisions for next week. I didn't decide to come and podcast for you now. It was in my calendar and I just did what the calendar told me to do. Because it's got to be edited and all the bits done before it can get posted to you on Tuesday morning. So I didn't decide now. I'd already made all of these decisions in advance. Johnny didn't decide now how the maintenance is going to look. He decided probably, in this case, six or seven years ago, this is how this works and here are the systems for it. He just has to get up there and follow the systems. Now, he's doing maintenance. Any of you have had ever to do maintenance in any part of your business or life, whether it be on a property or machinery or technology, you know that if you're doing maintenance, surprising things are going to crop up. So he doesn't want to use his brain space up deciding what to do next when he knows he's going to need it for whatever drama happens, whatever big problem pops up. Could be the weather in Johnny's case, because the weather's going to impact his ability to get down there. Do you want to keep your brain space back for the important stuff? Do you have a client that really needs deliberate thought to, to figure out through the challenge that they've got with their website or their design or their legal problem, or uh, you've got this opportunity with a joint venture that will buy more of your product. Like you need to use your creative power to do that, not decide what you should be doing next in your business. We want to get some tools that allow us to make the least number of decisions every day on the day-to-day -day stuff. What time do I do my sales calls? What time do I meet with my employees? What time do I go and work out? Like any of that stuff, all pre-decided. But because if you can make one decision that takes a thousand decisions out of your week or your month, you will find that overwhelm reduces massively. Overwhelm comes from too many choices, too many decisions to make to shift through it, and you just do nothing. You just make no steps to get out of it, you just do what needs to get done to get through the day-to-day. -day. You tend to stay in overwhelm and stay stuck for a long time. What I'm going to advocate is that you look up to the business and the life that you want to design. And if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your damn kids. Do it for your husband that you want to stay married to. Because when you're overwhelmed and stressed, those relationships are taking the brunt of it. And then do it for your team. Most of you will do more for your team than anyone else. Get it out of your head. Get it down on paper. Don't use it as a to-do list. Go through it. Make sure no one's going to die if those things don't get done. Pretty sure they won't. Figure out, is it going to significantly impact any of your important relationships? Yes? Get it done. No? Don't worry about it. And then start taking action every day, every week, every month to reduce the number of choices and decisions you want to have in your life so that you don't get overwhelmed again. From there, now you can start to think about what would I like this to look like and what do I need to remove from my life and remove from my business to make that work. Getting to a life that is spacious and has ease to it and abundance to it and flow is not a process of adding more. That's easy. Anyone can add more. It's a process of removing things removing choices, removing options, removing decisions so that you can have that abundance and spaciousness. At some point in the future, you can bring back in options, nice options like where do you want to go for date night and where are you going on holiday this year and 
which is going to be our next new house that we're going to pay for in cash? Or what's the new car that we want? Or what school are our children going to go to? Because we've got options. What after school activities are they going to be able to do? Because we've got options. But before you get there, you have to get rid of all the chaos, all the noise that you're carrying around up here. Overwhelm sucks. <laughs> it's a horrible place to be. And the nice thing is, simple and easy to fix. Download it, down on paper, reduce the choices, therefore reduce the decisions, get rid of the pain, get rid of the owl from the overwhelm so that we can start creating the life that you want and the business that serves that rather than the other way around. You've got to get your head out of the weeds to be able to move through this. And because I know you really well, you're like, but Sarah, what about all the other steps? Guess what? The road appears once you get going. And there are a thousand different ways to get to where you want to go in every aspect of your business and life. You don't need to know all the steps right now. You just need to know the next right step. And you will be far calmer, far more focused, far more curious, and a lot more fun to be around for the people that love you if you just go, I just need the next right step. You'll be able to move from there. Overwhelm is like drowning and then someone throwing you the life ring and you're going, oh, I don't know if I should swim towards it. That's how stressful it is. You're so stressed you can't make a great decision to save yourself. All you need is one step, not all the steps. Get them out of your damn head. I know you have the capacity to carry them around in there, but it's not serving you. Get them out of your head. Start reducing some decisions that you have to make on a day-by-day -day basis, and you will find that the rest of the year flows a lot more easily. And yes, that does mean I'm suggesting you say no to some of the end-of-year activities. Or think about a different way where you don't have to do them and everything else. The overwhelming shoulds are going to have to go for this to work. And, like I said before, if you won't do it for yourself, do it for them. Whoever them is in your life. And if you need some help getting rid of the overwhelm, book a quick 15-minute session with me. We'll do a Moxie breakthrough session and we'll figure out what is it that's calling this. Figure out the next right step for you. In fact, we'll figure out the next three if you don't like having just one and we'll get you moving forward without the overwhelm, ready for the end of 2024. Until next time, stay moxie.